So welcome everybody. Uh, this is another edition of uh, Conversations with Dr. Cowan and Friends. And uh, this is a friend uh, that I'm gonna tell you a little story about. His name is Dolph Zantiga. I think I may have got that correct. Absolutely. And uh, as I don't, I don't know if you've heard any of these Dolph, but the, I don't usually introduce people in the usual way like you were this or that, because I don't even remember those things. Um, but here, here's what I know of you. So we're it, back when I was living in San Francisco, we're talking maybe a year or a year and a half ago or something like that. I, I came home one day and my wife said, oh, I have good news. I bought us uh, tickets to go to an event on the relationship between uh, 5G or 4G and electromagnetic fields in water, and it's happening next month, and and it's great because that's exactly the thing that I'm interested in. I've written books about that, etc. And uh, one of my professions is I'm a professional grumbler, <laughs> so I said, you know, I don't like to go to lectures and workshops because I generally don't. I find most of them boring and uninteresting. And, and she said, no, no, I've heard this runs really good. And we, we're going to go, the two of us. OK, so it happened a few weeks later. And she ended up not going because something happened, I don't remember. And so I went myself, and I got lost on the train, and et cetera. And then I showed up. And I heard a number of talks. And I, uh, I think Magda Havas was there and uh, some other doctor. And uh, I, I, was, I could feel my resistance to being in talks kind of uh, lessening. And then I heard your talk on the coherence of water in relation to electromagnetic fields. And I would say, even me, I said to myself, wait a minute, I should listen to this guy because this is really interesting. Um, and it, it was a brilliant talk. I mean, that's all I could say. Thank um, you. And it was brilliant and inspiring, and it had a ring of truth to it. And uh, so many of these talks are just so dry and boring, and you know. And this this felt like it came from your head and your heart that were aligned. And and I just knew there was something to this, and I wanted to somehow learn more about what you were doing. Uh, then somehow we connected a few months later of a call uh, having to do with whether I could participate somehow in your enterprise, and I'm not sure where that was going, and we talked, and I think at that time you appropriately quizzed me about what I know about water. <laughs> And I don't know whether I passed or not, but apparently so. Um, and then we sort of lost touch, except I was still interested in your what you were doing. And then finally, somehow we reconnected. And then you ended up sending me, uh, I don't know if it's your first product, but this uh, water wand, which is a way to make water coherent. And all I know at this point is I am really looking forward to hearing you explain what you're doing, what you know about the relationship between coherent water, what is coherent water, how is this affected by EMFs in general, by 4G, by 5G, and how do we know what works, you know, uh, if you make something, you know, because I'm as you probably know, I'm suspicious of pretty much any biochemistry test. You know, for me, if the strawberries are healthier, I like it. And if they're not, I don't like it. And if you show me some enzyme and I can't prove that that's real, I, I just, I, it does, leaves me cold. So for, as I always ask people, if you heard anything just now that you didn't agree with, please correct me. And otherwise, Welcome, and if you could just explain how you got here and what you're doing and what in the heck is going on here. Well, what the heck is going on? I cannot give you all those answers, sir, Tom. But anyway, I'm pleased uh, to be part of uh, this uh, session. 
Uh, let me give you a little bit of background, and I'm very willing to give a lot of answers. Until now, everything you said is correct, so that's that's okay. Um, I was a businessman, and I worked in the IT as CEO for many big companies. I worked in Silicon Valley, I worked all over the world. I had my own company, I sold my company, and I became part of a, a, a brain tank. A lot of things going on in the world, uh, a lot of politicians I spoke, uh, it was about armament, it was about pollution, all those things. And I came to the conclusion that none of these politicians had an answer. They followed the normal rule, rules, the normal patterns. And it, it, so what not, year are we talking about here? What? Uh, that's more than 15, year, 15, 20 years ago, 20 to 15 yeah. years ago. And in the meantime, as a young man, I was, uh, I was quite often already in contact with people in the Himalayas. And so things like energy and all the things was, was quite familiar for me. I was, I was working on that. But as a CEO, you, you focus yourself on your work. I was one of the first inventors in the world on artificial intelligence and data mining. And we introduced that technology in the world. And that made me nervous because I saw that if you come up with a good invention, it can be misused in a terrible way. Yeah. And so I thought, hmm, don't be naive next time and take it serious and know with who you discuss it, et cetera, et cetera. I so you were actually working in this AI field and, and developing products or innovations? Yeah. In? yeah. As a matter of fact, I worked in the Santa Teresa laboratory within IBM, nearby San Francisco, San Jose. And I worked there with a whole team, fantastic people, by the way. And I introduced this, uh, in, this uh, AI stuff. And I already, at that moment of time, we already knew how simple it is to influence people. And uh, your former president was a master in that. Uh, but we found out that it is extremely simple, extremely simple. And we also found out how easy it is to, and how important it is for certain organizations to collect data. Yeah. And, and, and already at that time, you, you said you had some connection with people or something in the Himalayas. So you were on a separate path already. Oh yeah. When I was a young man, I, uh, maybe, you know, the book, maybe you have ever, read the book autobiography of a yogi from Paramahansa yeah. Yogananda well I came into contact with these masters and so I was introduced in that technology when I was a young man so that uh, gave a lot of influence in my life and so when I when I worked in the IT as CEO at a certain moment I couldn't continue my work I said this is we only talk about money and profits and shares and I, I started to hate it in the same time, I came to the conclusion that there was something very, very negative going on on this planet. I saw a lot of people becoming sick. I saw how it was in agriculture, et cetera, et cetera. And I met a friend who is still my business partner, who is a veterinarian, and he came to the same conclusion. And then I was in a very lucky position that I did some tests with him in a laboratory. And then I was invited to meet Professor Pop in Germany. Professor Pop, who, uh, who is one of the founders of the biophotons. And what year, what time frame are we now talking about? That is uh, 2007. Yeah. And then uh, Pop uh, became sick and uh, they asked me to take over the complete laboratory of Professor Pop. That's what I did. So that I took over the whole team of Pop, his team, and I introduced a new team and I introduced new technology on that and we built new technology. And you had no connection to being a scientist before this? Nothing. Nothing. Only purely interest, purely. Yeah. And it helped me a lot because I came up with stupid questions. Uh-huh. Right. Uh, and I found out that's the most important thing because uh, I, I had a lot of scientists with PhD in, in medicine, biology, all that stuff. But they were very limited because this was part of their thinking. Yeah. So we, we started with a very simple training. One day a week, everybody had to come up with a very strange story that was so stupid, but I had to take them out of their original way of thinking. And 90% was really, really stupid, but 10% was very valuable. Uh -huh. And that is how we continued 
And then suddenly everybody became interested. They said, hey, it works, et cetera, et cetera. But working with those biophotons, it was a wake up call for me because what we, for instance, and- uh, Can you me, tell us what a biophoton is? Yes, it is. If you have, uh, let me say this, the equipment that we have with biophotons is that you can see light, a very simple light form or mineral or an animal or plant or a human being. And the light, you cannot see with your eyes. The, the, the cameras we have are so sensitive that we can sense light on 20 miles difference. And we can see the flickering of a very, very small burning candle. And that light became a language for us. And in biophotons, you have the ability to see the living light around all kinds of organisms. You cannot see that with your eyes. You have to go through a specific frequency area. Yeah. And then you can see the biophotons. And that is, of course, an electromagnetic field. But we, can, we counted the photons in our computer systems. And then you can tell exactly, due to the waveform, what it is going to do and what stage it is in. So I give you an example. We, for instance, we measured seeds, just organic seeds from a plant or something else or vegetable. And what we did, we put them all together and we gave them water. And that changed my world, really. It was what I saw was an explosion of light. And I saw that that light was communicating with each other. There was an intelligence going on with the water and the light that I had never seen before in my life. And then I asked myself, what do I know? I know nothing. I know I'm, I'm stupid. Let, let's stop there for a minute because I have a feeling this is huge. So you, the first step is you essentially developed instruments, yep. maybe not you, but your group, or uh, yep. that could measure the emittance of an energy pattern, basically some kind of light from living beings. Yep. So, and this gets into something I talk about a lot. The problem in so-called science and medicine is we only think, we only know how, how to measure quantity so we only think there is quantity. And what you're talking about is a kind of measurement of the quality of a living being. That's it. It's essentially its ability to emit light, which probably, or at least possibly, is a fundamental quality of life. Yep. And so once you can measure that, that opens up worlds of what happens if you do this or that, or sing to it, or put water in it or whatever. Exactly. That's exactly what we did. Got it. All right. And, and then you become like a young kid again. You think, oh my God, I'm playing and I get information coming to me. And so then you put the seeds in water and, wow. and what happened then? I saw an explosion of light. Wow. And not only that, we counted the photons and then we saw certain data coming in into the computer and the data was a language for me because out of the data, I could see if the light and the water had a certain quality. What do you mean by quality? Because due to the waveforms, I could see in what stage it is because suddenly you saw that the, the DNA was activated in the seed because it was going to explode in light. And then phase one started and phase two. And at the end of the certain days, you had roots coming out of the seed. And then it was growing to the soil and it grew to the light. And you thought, oh, every time you had new waveforms and new energy coming in. Okay, let me stop you a minute here. Because I have been introduced to the idea that our DNA or any DNA has maybe little, if anything, to do with um, transcribing for proteins, but it has everything to do with the transformation of energy and light. That's our assumption. So not your assumption. It sounds like you saw that somehow. Yeah. yeah. Got it.
Yeah. All right. So you, you could see that the water activated the DNA, or maybe you didn't see it activated the DNA, it activated something which then started making processes happening which you could follow in your laboratory. That's it. Probably because you had experience with, you know, computer software analysis. Yep. Yeah. I knew how to analyze data. Yeah, got it. All right, so then what happens? <laughs> <laughs> and then we said, let's use different type of waters and let's use different type of seeds. And let's see if we can find specific frequencies in what areas happening. So we work with ultraviolet, certain areas in ultraviolet. We work with near infrared, with infrared. And in all those areas, we look what is the light telling us. And then suddenly the light became a language for us. Because and you can see this light move in phases, essentially. Sure, and in, in certain spectra, you see that certain activity there is. There is no part, there's nothing else active in another part, but in the specific part, there is an activity, and then it moves on to the next part. And suddenly you think, I'm looking to an orchestra. Uh -huh. and, but in God's sake, who is the, the director of this? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> got it, got it, okay. And then we tested all kinds of seeds from other companies, like, well, let's call a company, maybe you heard about it, Monsanto or something like that. Yeah, I think so. I think I've heard <laughs> maybe, somewhere. Maybe, maybe you heard it something. Yeah. And then you think, hey, they have a different pattern. Really? Can you describe, what, what's the difference in the pattern of a Monsanto seed versus a, you know, a biodynamically grown uh, open pollinated seed? Well, let me say the outcome. What the outcome is, what, what we have seen is that uh, certain, let me see this, let me say this. A seed is for us a kind of database with a collection of light in it. Yeah? Maybe in the DNA. Maybe in the DNA. Yeah. And the wider the area of light, the better it is. Better in what sense? For health. For health. For communication in the body. Uh huh. Yeah. For communication with the whole the ecosystem. Yeah, the, the the organisms in the soil. That's it. Yeah. Okay. And we noticed that in certain waters and in certain seed forms, it was limited. So, in other words, you had a a a paucity, a, a shrinking of the amount of light and the database, so to speak. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And of course, it was different from seed to seed, et cetera, et cetera. But this is in general terms. This is, yeah. this is what I noticed. And then we became very interested in the question, what is food, what is health, and what is water? And, and we, when you say we, you mean this lab that you're now the director of? Yeah, no, the, the team around us. And then yeah. we, we had this discussion and then we suddenly said, one of the most critical parts in this whole communication area is the role of water. Water is the trigger. Water is the one that says, hey, now we start to take action and now we bring you somewhere. The water oh. stimulates the light. That's it. So uh, we said, oh, that's easy. Then we go to the water conference and we go to some uh, professors that know all about water and they can tell us everything about water. Surprise, surprise, nobody could tell us what water was. <laughs> right. I've heard that before. Yeah. <laughs> no one has a clue. Nobody had a clue. And I said, Everybody said, yeah, it's, 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 it's H2O. Yeah, but that's too simple. But they yeah. said, tell me something more. And they said, we don't know. Yeah. They said, we still don't know in the 21st century why ice is floating on water. We haven't got a clue because normally it sinks. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so what's happening? You tell us. And then we said, well, if nobody can tell us this, then we better start to take action in our laboratory and found out what is water. 
So I uh, was in a lucky position that we could do some investments ourselves. So we were not dependent upon universities, et cetera, et cetera. So we invested- Or government all, grants or anything. Nothing. Yeah. We did all- and By now you're out of the telecom world. Now I was, I made some money there and I put all my private money in this project together with my friend. And we, we had a, a team of people, around 10 people, scientists with all different disciplines, one biology, one physics, one was a medical doctor, and we put them all together. And that was fantastic because what we noticed also in the world of science now, everybody is focused yeah. only on one item. No holistic view at all, as if that is a dirty word. And we said, no, it, the, the world works together. So how can you say that that is a dirty word? That is that's strange. Yeah. I have to ask this, it may be a weird question, but were you getting any help from these Himalayan masters along the way? More than you think. <laughs> I, th I thought that might be the answer. <laughs> okay, well, I did. <laughs> You, you uh, can say it, if you want or not, it's fine, whichever. As a, well, as a matter of fact, I was in the Himalayas last year. I was on the invitation day after Dalai Lama and his team. And I had to give a presentation of water for 300 Buddhist leaders, all Lamas, and they blessed the water that we made. So they don't do that with any water. Yeah, got it. So... But I don't tell more about it. Okay. So, uh, you, have an, you, have, you have an end. Okay, good. Let's go back. So, and, uh, so we, we continue with our work and it was very difficult. It was not easy at all because we could not go back to certain people who had this information. Although there were some very interesting scientists, especially in Italy, and they were quantum physics. And they made calculations that if there is a certain coherence phase in water, then it has more energy. But it was purely a an, 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 an mathematical order, but they could calculate it. And then began- Yeah, what do they mean by coherence? Yeah, that, that there is a function that the atomic structure was in such a line that yeah. the water bridges had a certain formation, right. whereby it became stronger. And then they said, if that is the case, if these water bridge, you have to understand you have the atoms and they connect to each other. And that is what we call a water bridge. Yeah. And those water bridges, they made a whole line of bridges with each right. other. And that is what they call a certain form of coherence. Later on, we found out that there are different types of coherence. And in these coherence forms, and that is probably the most interesting part of water, that you can create coherent types in the water but there is a kind of intelligence in the water that has the ability to form those crystal forms. And that in is- In other words, water can form many different coherent forms depending on something that the water is quote, thinking about or- Yep, yep, it creates it and it knows how to do it. Yeah. And then suddenly you, are, you, you make a connection with those scientists who are connected to the, to the quantum fields, et cetera, et cetera. And then you come up with a whole kinds of loads of hypotheses. But anyway, it's interesting. It's, it's, it's really, uh, you, you go to bed, you think, wow, you know, that's right. what's going on here. So, uh, but at the end of the day, you have to come to simple conclusions as well, because you had to move on. So we did, we did all kinds of tests and we built all kinds of machines. And then we found out that water is really a very, very critical element because we found out that water has the ability to pick up electromagnetic fields from outside and it works with those fields. And how did you figure that out? Well, we, we work with light and that is an electromagnetic field. And we noticed that you can, if you work with light, you get different outcomes. Uh -huh. And so you expose the water to different fields and then you see the light that it produces. Yeah, and then you can find in the overtones of the near infrared, is there a difference? Yeah, got it, okay. Well, that is what you did. <clears throat> and um, then we also found out that it is extremely difficult to measure water. It takes a lot of time, 
a lot of patients, and we were together with people in Japan who who knew how to measure certain types of water. So we we certainly came step by step, became more familiar in the world of water, and we also came into contact with a fantastic professor in in the USA. And um, everybody started to work together, but nobody had the the the, the, the final answer on that. The professor in the U.S. was Rustam Roy from Penn State University. All right, yeah. And he worked very close with uh, Jerry Pollack, who's also very familiar in the U.S. with the Four yeah. Phase of Water, that's his book. And they all noticed that if you work with light forms, et cetera, et cetera, and, 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 and light, that it has an impact on water. Uh, but we did a lot of tests ourselves, and we created all kinds of machines and we look to water and how does water respond to certain electromagnetic fields. For instance, if you take the standard electricity, you have 110 volt in the US. If you use that electricity and you connect it to water, you see that the water doesn't like it at all. Connect it in what way? Like put a probe in or something? Yeah, yeah. you put a probe in. Yeah. And it doesn't, how does it express this? Dislike that? What would you see? Well, we, we measured it again with with other light forms and also with bifonds, and we put that water. So we we put a probe in for a while, and then we were going to give that water to plants and to soil, and it gave a completely different response. Uh -huh. okay. And then we said, "Hey, that's interesting." And then we did the same with poison toxins, and all those tests were done. So we did hundreds, thousands of tests. Every day, new tests came in, new data was collected, and then we put it all together. And then suddenly, we started to understand that water is different. Each place in the world has different waters. And, and were you also testing the biophoton emission of the seeds or the plants or whatever you, yeah? Constantly, constantly. constantly. We, did, we did all kinds, every time, especially in, in spring and summertime, we did tests in agriculture. Because, and that was for us very important, agriculture has no ego. You simply see how modern nature works. Bang, yeah. that's it. Yeah. And it was extremely helpful for us. Uh, by the way, we also noticed that water can also be under the influence of human mind. So you can also influence the water in that as well. Yeah. And, so, and do you have a summary of the conclusions that you found with the these various influences on water and how they affect life? Yeah, we, we noticed that there are harmful and disharmful frequencies that have an impact on water. And water can hold that frequency for a long period, depending upon the influence and time, etc. But it can hold it for a long time. And that has a direct impact upon biological systems for a long, long time. Like years, days, weeks? And can be years. Years. Can be, can, can be, depending upon the influence at the beginning. But take, for instance, if you have radioactive water, then you have a serious influence. Yeah. Okay. You better, you better don't drink it. Right. So you were mapping, if I put... A uh, 110 volt probe in water. Here's the biophoton emission. Here's the effect on strawberries, on seed germination, and on the biophoton emission of those plants. Yep. Got yep. it. Yep. Okay. Then on top of that, we did also a lot of chemical tests. Meaning what? Well, we we took we looked to the soil and what are the chemical components into the soil. Yeah, potassium, iron, all that stuff, aluminium. And we, we looked at the different types of water that has a different effect upon the biome of the soil. And surprise, surprise, yes, there was. Yeah. Can you That's describe amazing. what you saw? Oh, yeah, it was amazing. We, we, we found out that if the water become more coherent, then suddenly the biological systems in the bacteria and the fungi into the soil responded very positive, and they were taking out the toxins much sooner than normal water. So you would actually measure the toxic le toxin levels in the soil yep. and, and find that if you made the water more coherent, 
that the toxic level in the soil would decrease sooner and faster than normal water got it okay there you go so that was an eye opener oh, right but also vice versa if you're going to pollute the water more and more then the whole cycle the whole eco cycle is becoming out of order as well and you would see abnormal growth or a, a lessening of the diversity of the organisms in the soil. More fungi. More fungi. And Just like only, people, right? Well, that is exactly what you say is exactly the situation. Yeah. And we also noticed if you are going to eat that vegetable, you also become much more vulnerable for fungi. Right. And you could even see that you could not only see what happens, but you could measure the biophoton emissions of the food and then probably use that to predict what will happen to the person. At a certain level, uh, Tom, we saw differences in the light that uh, if you have real coherent water, the light was five times stronger in the vegetables and also in the seeds. So we also made a collection out of the seeds and we, we were looking to those seeds who had most of the light and we used those seeds next year. And then the light every year increased if you are going to use this coherent water year wow. after year. So in other words, you are developing a, a more radiant seed line by selecting the seeds with the highest biophoton emission watered by the most coherent water. That's it. <laughs> I mean, you can only laugh. I mean, that's a great thing right there. And at uh, the end of the day, I'll tell you a very nice outcome because cucumbers nowadays, even if they're organic, they don't have a male and a female plant anymore. For many years, that's not the case. In our laboratory, we were able to bring back the male and female plants only due to the water after six years. In other words, you started with a plant that only had females, right? Yeah. And then over time with those seeds, you ended up the plant remembered how to make male and female parts. That's it. Can you imagine? And what, what was the radiance, uh, uh, the biophoton emission of a male and female cucumber versus a just a female one. Oh yeah, that was much higher than the standard cucumber at the beginning. So we, yeah. we collected those six for five years. And year after year, we saw that there was something happening and we didn't know what it was, but we saw that the biophotons and the energy levels were increasing also in other life forms. And we said, what does it mean? And we continued and suddenly we had this effect and we said, wow, mother nature wants to come back to its original state. You could almost say that the coherence of the water ended up in a funny sort of way becoming the structure or the morphology of the plant. Now what we, but yeah, that is what you can say. What we also notice is that water is in one way or another so intelligent with its connection in an ecosystem that it, it knows what to do in the next step as well. It, it, you, you can't tell water what to do. As a matter of fact, it doesn't want you to tell anything. Shut up. We do the work. It's more yeah. or less that. Yeah. You just get in the way. Yeah. <laughs> Let us do it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, and then you, so and what then did you end up uh, observing or seeing that um, uh, the relationship with wireless 4G, 5G on this whole process that you're finding out about? Yeah, we noticed that there are certain waveforms that can be extremely harmful for water. And well, I just told you already how we test that. And, yeah. and, um, and then we did a lot of tests and it became our standard test in our laboratory. We had a router at 4G and every time when we wanted to destroy water in its structure, we put it for 10 minutes on the router. Okay. That became the standard structure. So now they're destroying the coherence and the biophoton emission. Yeah. And then 
that watering a seed with that water, you would get less biophoton emissions mm -hmm. from that yeah. water. Yeah. And was that a permanent change? Permanent. Wow, permanent. Yeah. And what, what other ones? 5G, what did you notice? <laughs> 5G is in the woods. And then we build up our own equipment and because what we, we were a little bit disappointed that we had to wait so long before we could do measurements on water direct. We also had to do it indirect with biophotons, et cetera, et cetera. So we built completely new equipment if we can measure water direct with antennas in the water. And that is what we did. We did it for three years. And then we asked outside organizations, not our own laboratory, we said, because nobody's going to believe us. So we asked outside laboratories to do the testing. So, so in other words, you were putting like 4G probes or emitters in the water. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then we did some tests. And then we were measuring what is the quality of water direct. Well, normally we see when we work with our equipment that there is a certain layer of, of uh, electro mini voltage in water that, that has a certain communication with each other. You need very sensitive antennas to do that. And you have to build it in a very specific way. It took us years to do that. And at the end of the day, we were able to measure that and what we notice is that if we were going to beam 4G or 5G direct water for let's say one hour, then we saw no effect on the water at all anymore. What do you mean no effect on the water? It was completely out of his coherent state. It was completely what we called chaotic state, completely. Uh, no really communication, no emittance. And so it could not communicate anymore because what we think with, with uh, water, what it is, water responds in a natural way to the sun and the moon. And we, we, we even saw in our computer systems that when the moon came up, a full moon, we saw an explosion and also with new moon, an explosion of energy. It, we still can't explain it, but it is beautiful to see that. That is exactly what Rudolf Steiner said, that you have moon stages whereby seeds are very, very, uh, important to, to work with. And we, we found those stages with our computer system. It was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, but if we were going to uh, use 4G waveforms and 5G waveforms, we noticed that that went down dramatically. So in uh, other words, the, that interfered with the communication between the moon, say, and water. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Then we said, what part of the human body has most water? That's the brain. Yeah. So we said, well, let's put an EEG on a head and let's measure it. And that was a real shock for us <clears throat> because we noticed that if somebody was going to use his mobile phone for only two minutes, direct to the brain, we noticed that in certain areas of the brain, you, see, you saw immediately a negative effect. Most people, those effects take out of a few <clears throat> minutes, half an hour, that's it. But by some people, it remained. What was the negative effect that you saw? Well, what, normally when you measure brain waves with the EEG, you have the alpha state and the beta state, etc., etc., and then you have the, the 20 locations on your head right. whereby you measure your brain. And what we notice is that there is an average, a normal average, whereby brain has a certain balance on the emotional system and to the movement systems in the brain. And we saw that those systems didn't come back to the normal average state anymore. They remain high or extremely low. They remain there. And that was for us a serious warning. We said, hey, this is strange. Then we used it again, and we were going to, to beam it the 4G and the 5G energy direct, and we saw the same effect. So every time we noticed that 4 and 5G has a direct effect on water, and well, your brain is mostly water. Yeah. By the way, it is also, it became for instance also a very interesting discussion internally, because what we notice is that water has a certain memory. 
And everybody thinks that also the brain has a certain memory. Well, maybe it has to do with the water into your brain. Yeah. Got it. Because so, you are, so these waves were making the water in your brain less coherent, less emitting, less able to communicate with other parts of the brain, just like you were seeing in the water and the seeds and all the rest of it. Yeah, then we made another com uh, com uh, connection, Tom, because this is really interesting. We did the same on seeds and on soil. So we took that polluted water, we put it on the seeds, and then we noticed that uh, the seeds didn't have enough energy. And then you're going to eat that vegetable. Now, it's very interesting because, and that is what I showed also on the presentation, you know that the the biome in your gut is playing a major role for your health system. Right. But if the bacteria there, the fungi, if they are under attack, then you have a problem with your resistance into your health system. Yeah. And the nervous vagus is direct connected through the gut to the brain. And we say, hey, what's going on? So if we're going to eat the food, which is polluted by radiation, and you can't see that because normally you can measure toxins, but you cannot measure radiation of 4 and 5G. Yeah. That's very tricky, but you could see it on the energy levels. And if that also affects the brain, then you think, oh my God, what is going to happen on this world if we are going to use 4 and 5G with millions of antennas all over the world, and we are going to create a grid all over the world with only a few frequencies that are harmful for water. And that was for me a reason to say, now we have to tell this, the world, what is going on here? Yeah. Because this is going to affect the harvest, it is going to affect our emotions, it is going to affect the entire world. And the way it works is that 4G and 5G frequencies interfere with the coherence of water. They yeah. decrease the energy. They, they change the biome to a more fungal biome and less diverse. You okay. end up with uh, eating plants that have less energy, probably less nutrients and less of this uh, radi biophoton radiation. Then you end up with altered gut flora, which more, more toward a fungal uh, disorder, and then you have an abnormal brain gut connection, and then you can't think straight anymore. That's it. That's it. Well, and I think if I look around me, that's already happening. Because that's already happening. Think... <laughs> that's sort of where we're at. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Got it. All right. So, what did you decide your group to do about this? Well, we were looking, can we create coherent water that remains coherent? Because there are a lot of people that claim to be coherent and they use crystals or electricity waves or magnets, all those forms. And yes, it works. It always works. But there is a big but. How long does it work? Does it have an effect on the complete light area that you want to cover? Or yeah. is it limited and focused in energy only on a limited area? Um, and what is the effect after you have put that on a router with 4G? Yeah. Well. Or exposed it to a cell phone or ambient energies, yes. That's it. Got it. It, it all collapsed. Yeah. And we had so many nice people. They said, I play with my violin. I play Bach or Mozart. And then I drink the water. I said, yeah, but maybe you don't need Bach or Mozart in the water because of your frequencies. You maybe need the Rolling Stones. That's probably much better for you. So don't come up with, with a story. You need something that has a wide range and let the water do its work. Yeah. Otherwise, you tell Mother Nature what to do. Got it. So if you game the system and say, uh, you, this water needs Bach, you may be incorrect. That's it. Got it. Okay. Because so what did what, you do? Well, we tried to find out how can you make water that has a wide bandwidth and remain stable for a long time. 
And after many, many, many years of uh, looking to it, we found out that yes, water responds in a very harmonic way if you look to mother nature. So we had to go back to mother nature and we had to find out the patterns in nature whereby water respond in a natural way and keeps it that way. And that was an adventure on itself. So uh, can you describe what part of mother nature and how you did that a little bit? Uh, just a little bit. Um, the water that we make now takes a year before it is ready. Before it has the full coherent state again. Got it. And it has to go through certain uh, forms and uh, it, it must be under the influence of certain light and rhythms in nature. And you have to find out how to, to, to do that, how to bring it in. And, and you have to respect that in deep order. Don't think that you know how to do it. Mother Nature knows how to do that. Yeah. And we, we learn that step by step. And uh, my colleague and I were the ones that uh, we did that. We, we went through that whole learning curve and we found certain information in, in well, let's say in, in unusual places. And, and all the time that I think the important thing is you're doing a, a step and then you're measuring the biophoton. You're measuring what yep. it does to seeds. You're measuring what it does to plants, all this, every step of the way. 12 years. 12 years. And is somehow that coherent water is in this tube? You're a lucky man. Is that, is that basically, yep. So somehow you figured out how to put that that water made through that year long genesis yep. into a tube, which then um, exposes the water you put in your cup or whatever to the water and, and makes it more coherent as well. The beauty of water is that it wants to be in a coherent state. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we as humans also want to be in a coherent state. Right. But we also are constantly in chaos. Yeah. And uh, what we found out is that if you have that stick, you can make a limited amount of water, but enough for a family to use that. And then the water that is in coming into contact with this water is in one way or another copied because water can communicate with each other. It, it, it's, well, it had to do with quantum physics and all the things that we found all those steps and we were, then we can make this. And that is how we uh, were able to make this product. Got it. And all the tests that we did over the last two years and all the tests that were done by external laboratory universities were always made with those sticks. Got and it. We, we kept it and we did the test always after one or two months so the water that we used was always one or two months old. So it would keep the coherence unlike a lot of the other things that you tested. That's it. Got it. So there you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I think we, we, unlike your prediction, I think we got a lot more answers than you would have thought. I mean, <laughs> uh, I, I think we got a lot of answers here. So okay. my final question, how do people learn more about this? And is there also a way to get this sticks in the United States or? Yeah, we are, we are working on that now. Uh, there's a whole team working on it, international team working on it. Uh, there is a website whereby you can find some of the tests we did. Uh, one of the very interesting tests and it was finished in London uh, this month. Uh, we did it on an enzyme test with glycans. All right, I saw that. <laughs> it was amazing. The yeah. doctors couldn't believe it. They yeah. saw that aging went down and they said, this is crazy. So yeah. we, we have already ideas how to do a new test. And we, we will publish more about it and we want to give more presentations around it. And we want to cooperate with certain people all over the world that also have a much wider understanding of um, the issue health. Yeah. And, well, we and, are certainly very interested in working with you and helping to <clears throat> make this known and even helping 
people get access to information and even the products. So well, I'm looking forward to it, Tom. Is there a website people can check right now? Yeah, we call it Analemma, uh, Analemma Water. Analemma is the formation of the sun every year, because as you can imagine, everything has to do with light. Yeah. And I saw already in one of your emails that already some people said, hey, there might be a connection between light and water. And I can tell you, yes, the connection yeah. is there. So it's um, analemma.com? Yeah. Analama water dot com. A n a l e m m a water dot com. Yeah, yeah. yeah. analama, and then I think there was an uh, a dash, yeah, dash in between water dot com. Yeah, analama dash water dot com. Yeah, and we will introduce more and more scientific papers on that. We do it step by step, and we continue to do the test and. Uh, well, Tom, we definitely have uh, a lot of context, I think, in the near future. Got it. Dolph, I think we got it. I am just so uh, grateful, and we will be in touch. Looking forward to it, Tom. Okay, okay. thank you. Bye.